Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Spark Summit 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are continuing to talk about two people who are not just talking about things, but doing things, and we're happy to have from Novetta, the Director of Predictive Analytics, Mr. Rob Lance. Rob, welcome to the show. Thank you. And also to my right, George, how are you? Good. We've introduced you before. Yes. <laughs> well, let's talk to the guest. Let's get right to it. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about what does Novetta do, and then maybe what apps you're building using Spark. Sure, so Novetta is an advanced analytics company. We're medium sized and we develop custom, and, uh, custom hardware and software solutions All uh, right. for our customers who are looking to get insights out of their big data. Mm -hmm. Our primary offering is a hard entity resolution engine um, and we scale up to billions of records and we've done that for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. So you're in the business end of analytics, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, uh, so talk to us a little bit more about the entity resolution, and that's all Spark, right? This is like your main priority? Yes, yes indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, so entity resolution is the science of taking multiple disparate data sets, big data, traditional big data, mm -hmm. um, and taking records from those and determining which of those are actually the same individual or company or address or location, uh, and which mm -hmm. of those should be kept separate. And so we can aggregate those things together and build profiles and that enables a more robust picture of what's going on for an organization. Okay, and George? Yeah. So, um, what did you do, what, what was the solution looking like before Spark? And uh, how did it change once you adopted Spark? Mm -hmm. Sure, so with Spark, we, it, it enabled us to get a lot faster. Obviously those computations scaled a lot better. Um, before we were having to write a lot of custom code uh, to get those, those computations out across a grid. Um, when we moved to Hadoop and then Spark, um, that, that made us, let's say, able to, to scale those things and, and get it done mm -hmm. you know, overnight or in hours and not weeks. So mm -hmm. when you say you had to do a lot of custom code to distribute it across the cluster, does that include when you were working with MapReduce or w was this even before the Hadoop era? Oh, it was, mm -hmm. it was before the Hadoop era and that predates my time so I won't be able to speak expertly about it but uh, to my understanding, it was, it was a challenge, for sure. Okay, mm -hmm. so this sounds like a service that your mm -hmm. customers would them, them, themselves build on. Like, like um, maybe an ETL customer would you know, figure out master data from you know, a repository that is not as carefully curated as a data warehouse mm -hmm. or, or similar applications. So who is your end customer and, and how do they build on your solution? Mm -hmm. Sure, so the end customer typically is an enterprise that has large volumes of data that deal in um, particular things, right? And they collect, you know, it could be customers, it could be uh, passengers, it could be lots of different things. Mm -hmm. And they want to be able to build profiles about those people or companies, like I said, or locations. Mm -hmm. uh, any number of things can be considered an entity. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way they build upon it then is to how they uh, go about quantifying those profiles. And so we can help them do that. Uh, in fact, some of the, the work that I manage does that. Mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes they do it themselves and they just, they take the resolved data and that gets resolved nightly mm -hmm. or even hourly. Um, and they, they build those profiles themselves for their own purpose. And, mm -hmm. and then to help us think about the application or the use case holistically, Mm -hmm. Once they've built those profiles and essentially harmonized the data, what does that typically um, feed into? Oh gosh, uh, any number of things really. Um, and oh shoot, I mean we've got we've got deployments on AWS uh, in the cloud. We've got deployments, lots of deployments on premises, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And you know that can go anywhere from relational databases to graph query language databases. Mm -hmm. um, lots of different lots of different places from there for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, this actually sounds like, I mean every, everyone talks now about machine learning informing every category of software. Mm -hmm. um, so this sounds like you take the old style ETL where um, master data was a, a value add layer on top mm -hmm. and that that was, it took a, a fair amount of human judgment to do. And so now you're you're putting that service on top of um, ETL and you're largely automating it, probably with, I assume, some supervised 
you know, guidance supervised training? Yeah, so the, we're getting into the machine learning space as far as entity extraction and resolution yeah. uh, and recognition because more and more data is unstructured. Um, but machine learning isn't necessarily a baked in part of that. It's actually entity resolution is a prerequisite, I think, for, for quality machine okay. learning. So, um, you know, if Rob Lance is a customer, mm -hmm. I want to be able to know what has Rob Lance bought in the past from me, um, and mm -hmm. maybe what is Rob Lance talking about in social media. Well, I need to know how to figure out who those people are, and who's Rob Lance, and, and who's Robert Lance is a completely different person. I don't want to collapse those two things mm -hmm. together. Um, and then I would build machine learning on top of that to say, right now, what's his behavior going to be in the future? Uh, mm -hmm. But once I have that robust profile built up, I can, mm -hmm. I can derive a lot more interesting features with which to apply the machine learning. Okay, so you are a Databricks customer and there's also like a burgeoning partnership. Right? Yeah, yeah, I uh, think that's true, yeah. So talk to us a little bit about what are some of the frustrations you had before adopting Databricks and maybe why you chose. Yeah, sure, so um, the frustrations primarily with a traditional Hadoop environment involved um, having to go from one customer site to another customer site with a, mm -hmm. an incredibly complex technology stack, um, mm -hmm. and then do a lot of the cluster management for those customers, uh, even after they'd already set it up, because of the, just the, all the inner workings of Hadoop and that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, and so getting our Spark application installed there, you know, we had to penetrate layers and layers of, mm -hmm. of uh, configuration in order to tune it appropriately to get the performance we needed. Okay, and were you at the keynote this morning? Uh, I was not Didn't actually. Didn't ever make the key. Okay, I can ask you about that then. Uh, I'm <laughs> but I'm going to ask you a little bit about your wish list. I mean, you've been talking to people maybe in the hallway mm -hmm. here, you just got here today, but uh, what do you wish the community would do or develop, uh, or what would you like to learn while you're here? So, learning while I'm here is, I mean, I've already picked up a lot. Um, mm -hmm. It's so much going on, and it's such a fast-paced environment. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if I had a wish list, I would, I would want a more robust MLlib, uh, mm -hmm. machine learning library, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, all the things that you can get on traditional, um, well, traditional, in scientific computing stacks, uh, mm -hmm. moved onto a Spark MLlib for easier access mm -hmm. on a cluster would be great. Is there, um, I thought several years ago, MLlib took over from Mahout as like the most active open source community for um, adding really, I thought, scale out machine learning algorithms. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't have it sort of all now, or maybe all of something you never reach, kind of like the Red Queen it. effect, you know. For sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, what else is attracting these scale out implementations of the machine learning algorithms? Hmm. Um, In other words, what other platforms? You know, if it's all, not Spark, then. I don't think it exists, frankly, unless you write mm -hmm. your own, right? I think that would be the, the way to go. That's the, the way to go about it now, so I think what organizations are having to do with machine learning in a distributed environment is just go with good enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas some of, maybe some of the ensemble methods that are, I mean, they aren't, actually aren't even really cutting edge necessarily, mm -hmm. uh, but you can really do a lot of tuning on those things. Doing that tuning distributed at scale would be really powerful. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere, and I, I'm not going to be able to quote exactly where it was, mm -hmm. but actually throwing more data at a problem is more valuable than tuning a perfect algorithm, frankly. Um, hmm. And so, if we could combine the two, I think that would be really powerful. That is, finding the right algorithm and throwing all the data at it would get you a really solid model that would pick up on that signal that underlies any, any of these phenomena. Okay. I, well, oh, I was going to say, I think that goes back to, to um, I don't know if it was a Google paper or um, one of the Google sort of search quality guys who's a, you know, a luminary in the machine learning space says, data always trumps algorithms. Yeah. You know. <laughs> no, I believe that's true, and yeah. that's true in my experience, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, so, once you had this m machine learning, and once you've perhaps simplified the sort of multi-vendor stack, mm -hmm. then, then what does your solution start looking like in terms of broadening its ap appeal mm -hmm. um, because of the lower TCO, and then perhaps uh, embracing uh, more use cases? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know that it necessarily embraces more use cases because entity resolution applies so broadly already. Okay. Uh, but what I would say is it will give us more time to focus on improving the ER itself. Um, okay. And that's, a, I think, going to be a really, really powerful uh, kind of improvement we can make to Novetta Entity Analytics as it stands right now. 
Um, you know, that's going to go into, you know, we alluded to before, the machine learning as part of the entity resolution, uh, mm -hmm. entity extraction, automated entity extraction from unstructured information. Mm -hmm. um, and not just unstructured text, but unstructured images and video. Um, mm -hmm. Could be a really powerful thing, you know, taking in stuff that isn't tagged and, and pulling the entities out of that automatically without actually having to have a human in the loop. Um, mm -hmm. You know, pulling every, every name out, every phone number out, every address out. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead, sorry. This was, this goes back to a couple conversations we've had today where um, people say data, you know, Trump's al algorithms, even if they don't say it explicitly, and so the cloud vendors, you know, who are sitting on billions of photos, you know, many of which might have, you know, um, house street addresses and things mm -hmm. like that, um, or faces. Um, how, um, how do you make better, um, how do you extract uh, better tuning for your algorithms from data sets that I assume are smaller than the cloud vendors? Um, so they're not, they're pretty big. Yeah. Um, and we employ data engineers that are very experienced at, at tagging that stuff manually. So what I would envision would happen is that we would apply somebody for a week or two weeks to go in and tag the data as appropriate. In fact, we have products that go in and do concept tagging already. Uh, across multiple languages. That's going to be the subject of my talk tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact. Um, but we can tag things manually or, or with machine, machine uh, assistance, mm -hmm. uh, and then use that as a training set to go apply to the much larger data set. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm not so worried about the scale of the data. We already have a lot, a lot of data. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be that getting that proof set um, that's already tagged. Mm -hmm. so what you're saying is, it, it actually sounds kind of kind of important, and that actually almost ties into what we hear about Facebook training their, their uh, messenger bot, where we can't do it purely just on uh, training data, mm -hmm. so we're going to take some data that needs semi-supervision, mm. and that becomes our new labeled set, our, our new mm -hmm. training data, and then we can run it against this sort of broad unwashed mass of, mm -hmm. of training data. Is that sort of the strategy? <laughs> um, it certainly, we would get there. We would want to get there, and that's the beauty of what Databricks promises, is that ability to save a lot of the time that we would spend doing the kind of nug work on cluster management to, to okay. innovate in that way, and we're really excited about that. All right, we've got just a minute to go here before the break, sure. uh, so I want to ask you maybe the wish list question I've been asking everybody today. Uh, yeah. What do you wish you had, whether it's an entity resolution or some other area in the next couple of years for Novetta, uh, what's on your list? Well, I think yeah. that would be the, the more robust machine learning library mm -hmm. on Spark, kind of native, so we wouldn't have to deploy that ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I, I think everything else is there, uh, frankly. We, we, are very excited about the platform and the stack that comes with it. Mm -hmm. oh, well, that's a great ending right there. Uh, George, do you have any other questions you want to ask? All right, we're just wrapping up here. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you uh, being on the show, Rob, and uh, we'll see you out there in the expo. I appreciate it, thank you. All right, thanks so much. George, thanks, it's good Rob. to meet you. Thanks. All right, you are watching theCUBE here at Spark Summit 2017. Stay tuned, we'll be back with our next guest.